I believe we are. All right, we're recording. I'd like to call to order a special meeting of the City of Warrington Planning and Zoning Commission for Thursday, October 12th, 2022. Our only item of business for tonight's agenda is the NERDOSH amended site plan, which was tabled from our previous meeting last week. And I will turn it over to Tim to bring us up to speed. And I know we do have our city attorney here to give us additional information that we had asked for at the previous meeting. This is the Administrative Site Plan 161. Uh, NIRDOSH LLC has applied for an Administrative Site Plan uh, to modify the original site plan C store located on the uh, 2.61 acre of land on the west side of Highway 47, north of Warrior Avenue. The original site plan shows gas station Thank you. A gas station with convenience store, restaurant, which are permitted use, and the car wash on the plans is a conditional use in the C3 zoning district. The following conditions were placed on the original site plan, uh, provided a storm water management plan prior to land disturbance, verifying compliance with the city regulations. Car wash hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. The original Site plan shows a right turn, a right in, or right turn in, and a right turn out only for egress and ingress and egress from southbound Highway 47 um, into the site. MoDOT advised the applicant by email the entrance located location for that site was acceptable. Um, the applicant engineer uh, Bart Corman advised me MoDOT has had advised the applicant they could not have the entrance to the site from this location since it is a limited access area. The applicant is requesting to modify the site plan by removing the southbound ingress egress to the site for Highway 47 and leave a stubbed out road to the north. Uh, BART has supplied new uh, site plan and drawings showing um, the location with stacked cars. Uh, do you have any questions for me? BART's here tonight to answer any questions. Do you have any questions for me? Anyone have a question for Mr. Burks? Mr. Corman, would you like to address the commission? Sure. sure. For the record, Bart Corman, Lewis and Beatty, Surveyors and Engineers. Um, Tim explained it pretty well. Uh, you know, we had initial approval from MoDOT for the location, which is all you have to do. You can't get a permit till you have your, your contractor in line. Uh, so when we went to that, that part, we had a contractor lined up and stuff. We sent in final plans uh, to MoDOT. Um, those got reviewed and pushed up the ladder at MoDOT. And uh, they decided that they didn't like that for access. Uh, we, we knew for sure that from that entrance towards the light, was no access and we knew that from up front and that's why the entrance was placed where it was. Um, but but that is defined as a limited access which which takes the district engineer's approval uh, to, to be able to be done and we had some lengthy conversations and meetings uh, with MoDOT and uh, pretty much got at a stalemate at that location um, or many alternatives that we offered and so therefore as soon as we got that figured out, we contacted city and said, hey, we need to delete that entrance. And so we sketched that out on a plan that you probably have in your file showing that. And uh, through an administrative site plan process, the city has passed it on to you guys to, to look at. So, or from the administration to, to the board. And I'll answer any questions I can in more detail, but that's the basics of it. Thank well, you, Mr. Corman. I have a question. What was the reason that they <coughs> said they're taking it out? So they have defined that right of way line as limited access. And so uh, it is the district engineer's full discretion uh, on that. And their reason was they don't want it. Um, and we offered quite a few things. Uh, the safety is what they classify. And I sent an email with that email chain of, of the in writing reason, but uh, 
but it's it's basically we we all, we offered you know a decel lane for that right in only uh, and, and things like that and, and and got basically rejected in that meeting so um, what was it limited to it says limited access so what's what is it limiting to sure so I'm, I've learned a lot about limited access lately um, so so when MoDOT has limited access um, you have to get special permission to, to access it there. Um, most properties have just regular access and usually limited access comes whenever they do a widening project. And so that's when it came through is when they widen that out to put the light in there at Warrior. Um, but it's not consistent because across the street uh, at the church is not limited access. So that was some of our argument too is why is it on one side not the other? Um, but that was based upon what they negotiated with the landowners at the time through a court case situation. So they have more authority on one side of the highway than the other. So this was this was limited access before it, this project was even conceived, correct? So that's Mr. Cornell, I believe. <coughs> it is, but I cannot hear him. Can you turn up your iPad? Uh, mine is all the way turned up. We're all the way turned up, too, so. All right. I heard what you said. He was asking if there was limited access before the project started. So, so if the question was, is there limited access before the project started? And, and the answer is yes. The limited access occurred when um, the light was put in years ago. Um, the right-of-way plans are not extremely clear on that. The right-of-way plans have the section that we know is no access, designated no access, and a section north of there has the designation of, with a cross, of limited access. But uh, the little strip in between, that transition place in between, there is actually no designation on it, but MoDOT clearly defined it as it is limited access in, in their, in, in their interpretation, so. So in their initial, you know, when they gave their initial non-official approval of the access, <clears throat> they also apparently failed to recognize the limited access designation. Right. Yeah. They didn't. They did not so tell us anything about that. So, yeah. yeah. And normally, if you, if you got a reasonable plan, and especially on a right in, right out, limited access, you normally isn't a huge situation, but from what I've gathered, but in this case, it is. And right in, right out would would suggest that it's limitations limited. were being placed yes. uh, from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Is the access across from Whisper Whispering Pines, is that limited access, or would that be a full usable road if it went into place? So on the right-of-way plans, uh, the access across from Whispering Pines Lane is where MoDOT has designated that access point for, for the property to the north of the site, um, which I don't really agree with the site distance there, but that's where they have designated it. So, and, and not across from the church's main intersection, which I kind of thought was odd, but that's where they designated it. And they actually, MoDOT actually put in that little apron there uh, that you see across from Whispering Pines Lane. Whispering Pine Lane you're talking about? Yes. Right. That was the Which question. Which is a little bit dicey given the crest of the hill to the yes. south. That is correct. What else well, do all of you have? It's a dicey intersection, but not necessarily if it's right in, right out. Say that again. I think his question is that it so at the intersection of Whispering Pines, John, are you asking if that's limited to right in, right out? No, my comment was that while the sight lines aren't great and it may be a less than desirable intersection, comma, <laughs> the safety is uh, mitigated if it's right in, right out. Yeah, so uh, on, on a lot of, if you limit a, an, an intersection to a right in, right out, you, you do take 
and increase the safety on it because you don't have that crossover traffic. Right. You mentioned something about special permission on a limited access. Yes. What does that mean? So, from what I understand, the district engineer has to approve it. Where most permits do not have to go all the way to the district engineer's authority because there's a local permitting person that that handles that but when it becomes into a limited access situation it has to be signed off by the district engineer and we we can't go that route because why she pretty much said it's not happening and I Tony Gagliano's here in the crowd he was on that same conference call and 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 the reason for it was why she said it's not happening I know <laughs> but is there a reason is it safety is it is there something that the city can you know we can negotiate with right I mean it's just I need we, we kind of need understanding right right and that's kind of where we left off too I mean we we offered quite a different other alternatives by just a write-in only, you know, a decel lane and, and, and write-in only. We offered, you know, an exchange of five to ten feet of right-of-way for that, so that they wouldn't have a purchasing problem later on, you know, widening 47. Um, the whole works and and got nowhere. So, yeah. So I have a question for our new lawyer. <laughs> So if a safety engineer from the state says, you can't have, this is not happening, what is allowed that, shouldn't there be a reason why? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have all. So can you, so somebody help him out with where the picture is? Which, the first, the second one. It starts there. <coughs> so this is um, an email from Cindy Martin, the local permitting MoDOT individual, to me prior to our meetings and discussions with the district engineer, but basically that's the last written correspondence I have. It says, after your conversations with Jeff and I, I, and due to this being a no access and limited access area, the issues in the area in the past with this location, we do not see a compelling reason to allow an entrance of any type in the limited access area. We did forward all the information to our district engineer, and this is her response as well. For any further evaluation, you need to designate the location limit access, no access to your plans, and demonstrate your requested access is beyond that limit. At that time, of the issues with the stop light MoDOT left ac and access to 47 at one location further to the north across from Whispering Pine Lane. From what I can tell on your plans and trying to line up, it looks like that is on the property to the north. If it is on your developer's property, then the best bet would be to build a road off of that existing access. Cindy Martin. And that is, is what the with the last written correspondence I have, and that meeting was basically confirmed that same exact response. Um, on that email, he said, or she said, that uh, there were issues on that property previously that led to their decision. What's the previous issues? So I'm assuming the previous issues that she's referring to is is the acquiring of the additional right of way for the light widening, widening, which uh, I believe went to court and and had a judgment on it. That was previous property owners, right? Yeah, that was previous property owners. Yeah. So we inherited a little bit of bl bad blood. I caught that. Yeah. So, Mr. Young, is there any other insight from this issue? Well, in terms of the question that was posed about whether or not they have to have a reason, the answer is ultimately, yes, they will have to have a reason. 
Do they have to extrapolate that reason in detail at this time? The answer is no, because no formal application has been submitted. So what that detailed rationale is, we don't know the answer to that, but they've at least indicated what that's going to be, which is why the application is not being submitted. Thank you. So that they would have to cite their reason at the point that if Mr. Corman or the project appealed this decision. I don't know. I don't know if they would actually have to cite the reason in any formal document other than denial. Uh, but if push came to shove and there was a challenge to it, they would have to justify it at that time. Yes. So just to let you know. If we thought there was a pathway forward. We wouldn't be here bothering you guys tonight, to be honest with you. So <clears throat> is there any effort underway? If maybe you don't know or maybe no one wants to talk about it, but <clears throat> has there been any effort made uh, to move in the direction of having an additional access point to the north on the, the piece of property to the north? In, in other words, an off-site ingress egress from 47 that ultimately would connect into this property are you aware of any efforts on the part of the developer or, or any plans in the future possibly to to bring those connections together i i can't answer any of the details of that but obviously our plans show a stub from warrior to that property okay um for good planning of additional connectivity outside of the 47 access. Um, so I can't tell any more detail than that. Tony may be able to share some light on that. I don't know if he can or not. Um, but we have had conversations with the property owner to the north. And, and, and there's not any reason to believe, I would assume, that, that uh, there'd be a, a similar obstruction to an ingress egress to the north do we anticipate or have we been given any assurances that modot would uh it would allow there's got to be some access on and off these properties for them to be viable right you know they they do on that property of the north does have that one that's designated across from west spring pines lane and that's that's all that they can confirm at this point you know they MoDOT was open to moving that if we had control over it, but we don't have control over it. You know, okay. they, they were open to that as probably our only way in, but we don't have control over that. But they weren't, oh, they wouldn't have been open to moving it all the way up to where it was proposed to be in the first place. So, yeah, probably not a, yeah. a viable option at the moment. Right. Are you going to put up? right turn lane at the uh, stoplight up there or is that in the plans what, right turn lane where at the warrior, warrior ridge it's warrior ridge from South the, the warrior, warrior avenue oh yeah warrior, warrior avenue the stoplight has you you know it has oh. a left turn for uh for going to the school what i noticed it doesn't have a right turn for going in all of the property all of that's the purview of MoDOT. <clears throat> I don't think that the city nor the property owner have any uh, ability to impact when or if that happens. No. Am I wrong about that? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that. We we even had a small conversation on just changing the light timing on a left turn yield uh, for for both north and southbound, so that when there isn't as much traffic, you don't have to wait for a, a green arrow. But that didn't go anywhere either. Okay. Uh, one of the other questions that came up, and I think is part of the reason why the the subject was tabled um, at the previous meeting, is uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Mr. Cornell had indicated a uh, a question for legal about whether this elimination of this ingress egress 
called into question the original approval of the site plan as submitted and the conditional use as submitted. Am I remembering that correctly, Mr. Cornell? Yes, that is correct. The fact that the site plan is was part of the approval, uh, I, to my belief then, the uh, the approval is no longer valid if the site plan is not valid. I'll address the two issues separately. First, with the conditional use permit, the ordinance that approved the conditional use permit did not condition it upon compliance with the site plan that was approved. So coming forward with a modification to the site plan does not invalidate the conditional use permit granted. As to the approval of the site plan, which was done by separate ordinance, the city, go, city code does provide a process for administrative modification of a site plan after approval uh, and that's the process that we're going through right now. So it allows us to work within the site plan that was originally submitted and, and this amendment without publishing and new, pu new uh, public that, hearings and things of that nature. Yeah, I think, I think that, that was part of the, was it the 30 day process that we're currently in now? So we had this special meeting to ensure that we're staying within that right. 30 day. Well, I, I know the 30 day process was brought up, but I, I know that Mr. Cornell, his, one of his uh, rationales for tabling was to get clarification with a legal right. uh, review of that. So we've got that on record now. What else uh, is the commission interested in discussing with respect to this proposed development? So let's just say, well, we can't have that road. Right. Where are our entrances again? So, so our entrances are all in <coughs> Warrior. So, um, the the f the easternmost entrance is a right in, right out only, um, so that traffic can come in to the front of the store, which all traffic basically goes to the front of the store uh, for a C store, um, whether it's gas pumps or, or parking or start of the drive-through. Um, so, so that traffic can get in and quickly. And then further to the west, uh, to the west corner of the site is, is the uh, main access uh, to Warrior. Uh, which is shown there on the plans. And then we've designated um, cars in both the left turn lane and the right and straight lane of Warrior at the light, as well as cars within the site that could stack up to exit out. If, if you wanted to know how many cars we could actually stack uh, to wait to get out, um, which is quite a few. Um, those are spaced at twenty-five dollars from fr or twenty-five feet from front bumper to front bumper is what they are. So it's you know if you're do driving a normal car, that's it. If everybody's driving a suburban and a dually, then it's it's <coughs> you won't get quite as many there. So es essentially, what you're pointing out there is vehicles that would be exiting the drive-through uh, rather than making. An immediate right turn, and then uh, you know, trying to go to that westernmost ingress egress right. to make a left turn out. That <clears throat> they would be funneled back to the north of the entire C store building, and and then back out and around the entire property. Yeah, if if there was a problem getting out from traffic, that 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 would be their route. Okay, but there's nothing on the site plan that would prevent those vehicles from turning right to try to take the shorter route out at times that aren't busy or or times that Correct. aren't busy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, there is nothing and most of the time, you know, on low peak times, that's probably the path most people are going right. to take and probably won't have any problem with it whatsoever. So one of the things <clears throat> when when we discussed this at the last meeting um, with the restricted and and now limited or no access off of 47 really. Um, and we, my understanding is we don't yet have a, a definitive answer on what type of restaurants going to be there, what hours of operation are going to be in existence and things of that nature. Um, the thing I'm most concerned about, I don't know what the rest of the commission feels, but it, I, it seems to me like during the school year, during the morning hours, during the, the morning school arrival hours, 
when the school buses are going in and out off of Warrior to, to go to both the high school and to Warrior Ridge Elementary, uh, plus student vehicles and parents dropping off younger kids. That's, that's the time of day when that intersection, the traffic light at 47 and Warrior is, is clearly the most busy. My question for, and I don't know if Mr. Gagliano, if you can speak on behalf of the developer at this time, but you know, I would feel a lot more comfortable if the, uh, the, the developer would be willing to put some time of day, time, time of day operation restrictions on the restaurant so that it wouldn't be open for basically breakfast time uh, traffic for the, the, the restaurant part to limit some of that potential backup because it's not just the vehicles leaving the drive through that would concern me, but the potential for vehicle stacking up <clears throat> uh, so that both the left-hand turn lane onto Warrior and the southbound lane would be uh, a, a, a real snag for, for morning traffic. <clears throat> Is there any possibility, Mr. Gate, if you want to come up, absolutely. Um, I, we're, I would just like to know if the if the developer is open to some limitation, uh, Parker, and Tony Gagliano with Poor Real Estate Group Alpha on behalf of the Doge LLC. Uh, actually, yes, I've had the conversation with the with the developer, the owner, and he said that if you've got to put limitations, and we're not looking for a breakfast place right now. That's not to say that if tomorrow all of a sudden somebody came in with breakfast, but we're not looking for that. So if if it ties on that so that we can continue with the project and not lose daylight we're happy with that and then if somebody comes as a use and we have to they have to come back in front of you guys once we see what the traffic flows are going to be and everything we're willing to work with whatever way we can get this done so if it's our hours are limited already um, you know and to be honest the last two mornings I've sat there at the stoplight there's nothing coming off of Warrior Avenue by the pool and we know that already but yes it would be going in for breakfast and stuff like that but we're open to limiting our hours for the restaurant whatever way see fit and then down the road if, if we don't see the issue anymore we would be able to you know come back to you guys if we had to but we're open to that that's not a problem and you know my thinking is uh, if and when that that traffic apron on the property to the north actually attaches in and and runs around the property if that becomes a viable route in and out sure. that that that's I think a bit of a game changer. It makes the development um, more likely to coexist without creating some of those traffic issues. And for the record, we made an offer on the property, but we got no response back. So um, we have been trying everything, you know, from, you know, when we got thrown the curveball for MoDOT, and again, with Bart was a lot more. Uh, in his lane, uh, we were basically <coughs> told that Mr. Shaper, the previous owner, pretty much ticked off the engineer enough that it wasn't ever going to happen. Um, so when we were in a grudge match at that point. So, But we're willing to work with whatever way as long as we can continue moving through this project as quick as possible while we've been blessed with this weather you know, for construction. So, And we don't have a restaurant at this point yet. Uh, we've, and I'll be up front with you guys. We've been told two miles from the highway we're running into a distance situation. Um, and they said, let's get you open. And once we start seeing your in-store sales, you know, I've got several groups that are wanting to circle back. None of those groups, which are all national retailers, none of them serve breakfast. Um, so from that standpoint, that wouldn't be an issue. And my guy has got, you know, his inside set up for coffee and everything else to the point where he's hoping that sale stays inside the store. He's looking more for lunch and dinner. Okay. So. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Gagliano while he's up front? Not specifically for Mr. Gagliano, but some comments in general. Um, first off, if you all will recall, we had a very large uh, number of people that came and spoke on this project. And for the record, this is in my backyard. I am very much looking forward to this development, as is my family and many of my neighbors. But we have one chance to get this right. If MoDOT is saying that they are not willing to give that access because of a safety issue, well, it seems to me like all this is doing 
is shifting the safety issue onto that city street. And when we talk about the, the traffic, we can minimize what the traffic coming in and out is going to be. But certainly the developer plans on there being a high volume of traffic to justify his investment. And let's also not forget that we the property was subdivided. So there is the potential for two other developments to come in, one to the north and one to the west, that would also have to be accessed off of Warrior Avenue. And I, as I can tell, if that is a permitted use, we're very limited in what we can do to limit that traffic. So I'm disappointed that the ordinance was drafted and did not include the provisions of the site plan. And just because we can do this without public input, I'm not sure that we should. In the future, if we have a project such as this, could it, it would seem to me that there could be major features of a development, such as which direction the building was sited. Could they come back and orient it and turn it completely? Something that would totally change the development after the public hearing section, and, and they wouldn't have to face public scrutiny, and we wouldn't uh, have the opportunity to hear our constituents listen um, and, and voice their opinions on that. So I am very concerned because this is in my backyard, what that traffic is going to be. We, MoDOT is indicating they're not going to extend a right turn lane at Warrior Avenue. I travel that intersection every morning and every afternoon, and it's a nightmare. So I want this project, but we've got to do it right. With all due respect, the majority of the people that came that night and voiced their opinion were from the houses that were behind it, that come off of Bruni. They were more concerned with just what was going to be in their backyard. They weren't concerned about the traffic that was going to be on Warrior because they're not there. And to be honest, it, there's 25 acres of commercial ground there that's zoned there. And what if tomorrow I bring you Deerbergs or Target? You guys are going to say, no, I can't do a Deerbergs or a Target because we've got too much traffic on 47. So there's a bigger problem to, to you know, look at it from that standpoint in a sense, where we're a C-store that it's gonna be busy at times, but you, know, you can go sit at that intersection out of 24 hours a day, 18 of them, that's not, it's there's traffic that goes through it, but it's not stacking up. And I asked Bart to add the extra cars, just as an overkill to show, worst case scenario, we can put 30 plus cars there waiting to get out into the proper train, you know, turning areas. Now, if that ever happened, people are going to quit coming to our station and, and they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to go back to Casey's where it's even a bigger nightmare. So that was just to show that if it, for whatever reason, that would be the case. But even scooters, which had all kinds of bad reviews at the very beginning, go buy it now. It, it's not backing up on 47 anymore. So when it's brand new, yes, but once things get into it, there's a travel pattern and everything else, and we all drive it. I drive that same intersection every day, too, and three lanes, three of the, the one part of the cross to the west is not getting used at all at this point. So, and there's enough there to show the flow. It might even ease up some of the 47 traffic because people may be going into the gas station before taking their kids down to the schools. I mean, we don't know that, but it's one of those things that, you know, from a standpoint, of flow and traffic, I truly believe that, you know, from other developments we've done, that we've provided more here than any other place I've ever had for stacking situation. And it is, you know, yes, it's a, a city street there, and there's one down at Bruni, and guess what, those Bruni people are probably going to be the ones the first ones back in here once we connect over, you know, with the hopes that we do eventually. So. With all due respect, the, the residents who live behind it, they didn't voice a concern about the traffic on Warrior because there was access off of 47. There was no concern at that time, but the concern is certainly real that the traffic is going to loop back through their neighborhood, through the park, and through the pool parking lot. Okay. Um, 
I find it hard that anybody would go back behind the pool and around to get there, but it's not impossible. Any other questions? What else? Thank you for your time. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, we're here tonight because <clears throat> we needed to get some additional information and to get some clarification on the legal side. Um, we do have this 30-day window to get this up to the Board of Aldermen so that they can review it and, um, and make a determination on what the, the ultimate outcome is. But our job is to make a recommendation in the meantime so the Board of Aldermen can move forward. The only other question I have is, so if we make a motion to move forward with the amended site plan as presented, but we did speak of... Um, morning traffic but we've already put a conditional use in place so what's the methodology that we do to can we addend the conditional use at this time or is it do we approve this with I, I don't know mm -hmm. I think that it, Mr. Cullum's point would be that if we add a condition of no no rest the restaurant can't be open before the hour of 10 30 a.m. or 11 a.m. or whatever time uh, we feel like makes it safe on school days then how do we attach that condition since the conditional use has already been approved and those conditions are now law how do we add additional conditions on a re an administrative review of a site plan so in terms of the particular condition first the conditional use permit as I understand it, was for the car wash and that is, that's acted upon and that's done, so adding additional conditions to that particular use is not available at this time. Right. Uh, in terms of restricting the restaurant, the restaurant is a permitted use, and absent any specific city ordinance that has uh, time restrictions on the operation of restaurants, it's, you're limited in terms of what you can do in terms of limiting operation of the restaurants that's outside the purview of the city code. Now that being said, you can restrict certain turning movements at certain time, times of day uh, and require signage in that regard if that's something that would be appropriate. So you can make a requirement for signage but you can't make a requirement for hours okay. of operation? What you're doing is you're ultimately impacting the use of the property and the business operations but you can restrict turning movements to and from the property. We already did restrict the hours of operation for the restaurant in the original uh, meeting. I, I believe that the initial conditional use stated that for the car wash it would be at certain times of the day. It was. Yeah, it was the yeah, car wash. It was the car wash. So I guess if if we can't place conditions on hours of operation and yet we're concerned about how the traffic might move, I assume we also, and, and Mr. Gagliano just stated that the, the restaurant plan is not something that's in the immediate future, uh, whereas the C store, they would like to move forward quickly. Um, it sounds like there's not a way for us to say we would approve this subject to the restaurant not opening until such time as additional uh, traffic access is available to the north or, or, or comes up for additional review. I, I'm assuming that there's not a way to put that stipulation in place since we can't put any other conditions or stipulations in place on the site plan. None that are readily apparent at this time, no. And then the question would be, this would end up going to the so if we stated that we approve and vote for the uh, amended site plan with a notation by the board, or by the Planning and Zoning Committee to state, uh, to recommend. To recommend, as a recommendation, mm -hmm. there, there would still be no, there would still be no way it sounds as if the, even the alderman would be able to say no, it has to be during this time. But it would be a recommendation so that it would be on record so moving forward when there is something and they say well we've got to alter it and let's do a conditional use 
that would be a record that we could pull that back up. Is would that be acceptable for documentation purposes? Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. I may one other comment it was brought up about the other parcels and the being the subdivided. You can correct me if I'm wrong. They would have to submit site plans for approval. So at that point, if there is an issue with ingress and egress and traffic, those projects would run up against the that process. But we don't know what's there. I mean, those you know that dirt's been sitting there for right. 30 years. So I right. mean. But those projects would still have to come through the site plan, and at that point, you guys would be able to make the educated guess to say, hey, you know what, we need an extra here, or by then, we've acquired more, or someone else is coming in, and we've been gracious enough to let them connect over with our road. But at that point, we figured those two sites, which we have nothing cooking right now, they would have to come in front of you anyway for that same thing. So, and you guys would have a better picture of knowing what's going on with, with our situation now, if this has been overkill or not. Well, and, and I think Mr. Cornell's point earlier, I, uh, I tend to agree. When, when we look at a site plan, we're looking at it in its entirety and we're, we're trying to make a, a, a best decision about a proposed development uh, to include all kinds of things. Uh, appearance, impact on traffic, impact on neighborhoods, ingress, egress, and all these other things. And so when we make a recommendation to the Board of Aldermen to approve a site plan the way it's submitted, and that's usually how the motion's made, recommend that we uh, recommend approval of the site plan as submitted. When something like this arises, now it's a site plan different than was submitted. And so, you know, what <coughs> constitutes enough of a substantial change that that site plan is no longer valid? I'm not suggesting that this is enough of a change because everything else is where it was in the first place. But I do think it's an important question because I feel like we could end up in a trick bag on something a lot up that could be a lot bigger problem in the future if the elimination of one entrance due to a, a MoDOT restriction were to create a, a true uh, traffic nuisance or a true safety hazard that we didn't feel we could live with. It sounds to me like we don't have a way right now when we approve a site plan to put some stipulations that if there are changes, all, all it requires is administrative review, and I think our city staff does the best job they're able to do on that administrative review, but some of these questions are more than just, well, take that entrance out. Sure. Um, but I do believe Mr. Gagliano's point is a good one, which is that uh, assuming we're going to have some development on these other parcels in the future, uh, and we know that there's already an approved ingress egress to the north. Uh, the question is, can we, if it's if the if the next developer to the north is not our developer on this one, you know, would would we have some authority uh, at the time of that site plan to say it it's conditioned upon uh, providing some direct access to this property to the south? And I do. That is a question I I would ask if 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 this property to the north that does have the existing approved ingress egress comes before us for a site plan. I think, at least in 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 my particular case, I don't know about the rest of you, uh, but if we had the ability to place some requirement that that ingress egress have a point of connection into this development or something that serves this development, that would I think help a lot. Generally speaking, if you're talking about a cross access, that's a very common in a site plan review process, yes. Sounds like you have some workshop. <laughs> well, I just feel like it, it gives us something down the road that gives us a tool to maybe alleviate problems that we're trying to avoid in the first place. What else do you have? Anything for Mr. Gagliano or for Mr. Corman? I just want to make one last comment and I promise it's the last we are talking about making this change even though the developer I understand what Bart is saying that he doesn't see a viable path forward with MoDOT but there is still an appeals process that they are choosing not to go they aren't exhausting all of their avenues to try and resolve this it may be an uphill battle, but as I told uh, Brandon at the last meeting, the Supreme Court just overturned 50 years of precedent. So don't tell me that it can't be done. Uh, I, I think that 
uh, to, to just on a whim overturn the site plan when the developer hasn't taken uh, all of the remedies that are afforded to them. That's it. I think, uh, I think I'd be very surprised if you guys aren't going to keep trying to get that entrance. It, you know, that's just automatic. It just... So if you remember, we asked originally we came and we were wanting to do a full, you know, access point there. This board's the one, especially with Mr. Barton, said, I don't, that's not safe, you know, that whole stretch there, the hill. So we said, we're willing to go with the right in, right out. And to be all honest, that right in, right out, and that access off of 47 was more for convenience, not for business. Because if the people want to come into the store, they're still going to come up like most. And I talked to a local businessman today who's a friend of ours and everything, and he was like, I'm going to go to the stoplight. You know, he just, he goes, I don't ever take right in, right outs. But the point is, we put that in for convenience. And it had nothing to do with worrying about, you know, if it was, you know, a traffic situation or traffic. And, and that's on your guys, I get it and stuff. But yeah, we originally was like, we'll take a whole curb cut there, asking for the sun, thinking we were going to get the moon. We just got, we got bamboozled by MoDOT, who has their own, they have their own power, you know, in this state compared to just about any other entity out there. And that's what caught us off guard. And we, we had the initial green light, so that's why we put it in the first place. Otherwise, we never would have asked for it. And the conversation would have been going through the process back then. Somebody to make a motion. Yeah. You may. Hey. Okay, I may. I uh, I'm making a motion that we accept the new, or I should say the revised uh, entrance around Warrior. And along with that uh, amended site plan approval, with the recommend recommendation that as a restaurant style business would be put into place that it is uh, the board's recommendation that it would not serve uh, meals prior to 10 a.m. in the interest of school um, traffic and public safety. You all right with that addition? I'm fine with that addition. All right, so we have a, uh, uh, a motion by Mr. Durbin uh, with an assist from Mr. Cullum to recommend the site plan as submitted and with the uh, urging the developer when the restaurant opens to not open before 10 a.m. Uh, at this time. We'll need a second if we're going to vote. Second. Okay, we have a second by Mrs. Cullum. Any other comments or questions? All right, roll call vote. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? No. I can't hear what he said. He said, no. He said no. no. Mrs. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Jason Cullum? Yes. And Mr. Barton is absent. All right, so that motion to recommend approval uh, passes by a count of seven to one with one absent and one uh, vacancy, and that will come before the Board of Aldermen. Uh, is their next meeting next Tuesday? So this, this will come before the Board of Aldermen next Tuesday, October the 18th. Yes. Am I right on that? Um, and I guess that is the only item we had on our agenda tonight. So that concludes the meeting. Do we have any other comments uh, or remarks for the good of the commission? I see we got a thing about the bicycles on the... It's not on the agenda. I know, it's just for I information. Just, you know it's coming okay. up. So. Um, so uh, I guess we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Priest and second, second by Mr. Cooper to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. We are adjourned.